Welcome back to Budget Outlaws. Today we're continuing our turbo build and engine rebuild. Today we're assembling the uh, LS6 engine from scratch and adding a few other items along the way. The LS6 is like the LS1 in that it's an aluminum block with steel sleeves. Well, let's get started with some uh, sanity checks. So in order to keep from losing sleep wondering if it's right, we'll just double check and make sure that it is. We're using a pretty cheap Harbor Freight bore checker to see if the bore and taper are within specs. The uh, machine shop honed this to remove five thousandths to prepare for the new pistons. And this minimal change will ensure that the thin block will still hold up to adding boost. And the cylinder is still cleaned up real nicely. One of the changes for boost is to gap the rings, and as, as shipped, the ring gap is only around eight thousandths. It's really not enough for an enthusiast engine. So the piston manufacturers give us a starting point. Uh, so if you're running NA, nitrous, turbo, or supercharged, and for me, I'll seek outside help as well and expand the gap just a little bit more. Uh, our goal will be for 27 thousandths for the top ring and 29 thousandths for the second ring and the oil rings are left alone well after overshooting the top ring on a couple of cylinders I decided to bump them up to 28 thousandths for the top ring and 29 thousandths for the second ring and I think it'll be just fine alright does anybody remember what we're going to? we're going to 28 Whatever I said before, it doesn't matter. So let's try 27. Let's see what that does. Okay, we're not there yet. Let's do 26. We're at 24. So we went from 20 to 24 with 15 turns. So if we did 4 in 15 turns and we want to go to 28, we should do another 15 turns, but we'll do like 12 and see what that does. A little bit each time you're you're uh, making sure that you don't go too far. Uh. Okay, this should be pretty close. So we're going for 28. Did I say that last time? Good. We're ready to install the rings on the pistons. As, as the pistons are numbered and the rings were gapped per cylinder, we're going to install the rings on the correct pistons. So starting with the three-piece oil ring, you got the spring and then the two thinner ones, uh, one on the bottom, one on the top. And uh, we're going to offset those just a little bit so that they aren't right next to it. the openings aren't right next to each other so we'll put it on the other side then we're going to do the second ring and finally the top ring and the, the ring on in this case goes on the opposite side and you can see that that's not too bad you want to make sure you don't gall up the uh, the piston and when you're when you're finished with um, filing, you want to make sure that you um, sand the edges a little bit with uh, a stone of some sort. So these pistons and rods um, are ready to go in. But first we're going to clean things up and uh, we'll start with the heads. They, they, they checked the heads and they were solid. They weren't having any problems holding pressure. So I just cleaned them up for my own, because I like things that are clean when I'm putting things together. And then uh, same with the crank. They turned the crank mains 
um, down one more ten thousand, so it's a total of twenty thousands. The rods were already twenty thousands, and so uh, we just polished those, and they were fine. And we just did a cleanup on the other individual components. I do love the aluminum engines; they're just so much. I don't know. Feel like feel like you're putting together a, a real class of machine. So one of the first things I do is to do the, the cam itself, and you can do this with just a long bolt, pretty much with the whole engine assembled. So I, I prefer to do it this way, just to that last little bit of uh, protection against um, messing up the, the cam bearings or the, the surfaces of the cam. So it, it's not hard to do. And even it's not hard to do with a, you just shove a long bolt, screw a long bolt into the end of the cam and yeah. you have pretty good leverage to, to work. Go. The crank is just a drop in. We've already installed bearings and all of that. So it's ready to, to accept the, uh, the new crank. And of course we have assembly lube on everything. Once we get the crank in, we're going to check the uh, clearances. So we checked each of the main um, journals and made sure that they they were within spec. And f totally expect that to be the case, and of course they were. Um, but it's again one of those peace of mind things. It just once you know that you that it was right, then you don't have to double, you know double think what you were when if you have some sort of an issue down the road did I check that is it is it galling something or whatever so anyway so the the main caps um, they have a kind of a a pointy section on the cap that all they all point towards the rear with the exception of the last one which points towards the front. well many guys have built these over the years and and so they have a um, a variety of different ideas of, of how much torque it should be. But it's one of the accepted torque values was to put the, the two smaller ones in the middle at 65 and the two outer ones on each main cap with the studs on them. Those would be 55 foot-pounds. And then there's also two that go in the, uh, the sides of the block, 25 foot-pounds or so. Okay, the next step is installing the pistons. So we'll make sure that we get them in the right cylinders. The, uh, the pistons and the crank assembly are all balanced. And then we also size the rings according to cylinders. So it's important that we get them in the right ones. The rods are H-beam uh, eagle rods forged and they use ARP fasteners. So once again, we have a different torque set setting from factory. So we're not really ready to torque them down completely yet. We're just going to get them everything tight, make sure that the rotating assembly turns pr freely, and then we will go to the next step. So once again, we're going to check the uh, clearances using plastic gauge, uh, the poor man's machine shop. It's a real good, accurate way of, again, sanity checks to make sure that we're not having any, any kind of problems. And... These checked out good. So before doing the uh, piston to valve clearance, I wanted to put the timing chain on, otherwise I wasn't going to get the rocker arms to move. So I uh, installed the new timing chain, and it is tight. The other one was really sloppy. So that's going to help. On R4, So we're on R4, we're on the, the gear is our set at R4, and the timing mark lines up with R4. So we're retarded four degrees, and I'm hoping that's going to give me about 500 RPM more on the top end. That's my whole goal for it. And soften the bottom end a little bit. It's <laughs> it's going to come out, come out of the hole like a banshee, depending on how much boost I put to it. So I... I don't see any problem with that. It's going to spool really fast because the, the hot side is pretty small, um, comparatively. 
So now we're going to try a little YouTube uh, trick to turning the hydraulic lifter, the spare couple spare ones that I have, into solids so that we can make the uh, the engine pumped up so that we can do the clay test. And so all it is is taking the taking the uh, lifter apart, removing the spring, and turning it over upside down, sliding it back in, and then putting the uh, cup back in there, and then the uh, the retaining clip. And it is it's solid, and it's the same height as you, that you would normally have. So now we're ready to put the solid lifters or temporary solid lifters back in the engine and the uh, uh, the head and the valve train and we'll do oh and we slid some pieces of clay in there to do the piston to valve clearance so that's next so if we look on the intake side and it's like didn't even come close to touching and the exhaust side is pretty much it's still way above the piston and that's because it's dished. If it wasn't dished, it'd have to have a valve relief. So we've got lots of valve clearance and I don't see any issues with any of that. And future upgrades, hmm, maybe a big cam, but I really don't think I'm gonna need more horsepower, <laughs> but maybe in a different car, who knows? Let's put this thing together. So anyways, I got three feeler gauges in there. They're all three thousandths of an inch. And uh, I'll snug these down and the housing will then be set right. And we can pull the feeler gauges out. Cover on it and uh, we'll be good. And one of the things to note, this is a double roller timing chain, so it comes with a spacer that uh, spaces it out so it doesn't hit the back of this pump. So I am being careful not to over tighten these as I'm going to torque them down in a minute. But uh, getting, getting these little parts of this build correct uh, can make the difference between having a problem down the road or lasting for years. So now we're going to align the front cover with the bottom of the block and then the, the, the second part to that is to align it to the uh, harmonic balancer where it slides into the seal there in the front. And because it does move around quite a bit, so I pretty much you know, are going to eyeball it just to make sure that it's not high or low and then... Um, actually did an eyeball on the uh, um, the, t the seal itself as, as well just yeah there's special tools for it but uh, this should work just fine then we're going to move on to the rear cover and align it with the bottom of the block as well there is a seal on that goes over the crank and and that pretty much aligns itself So before I can put the pan back on, I got to fix a strip thread, and this happened a couple of years ago when I was redoing the pan gasket. So I bought this helicoil kit, which was good because it had all the bits that I needed for all the future thread repairs that I have to do on this engine. So you drill it oversized, and you thread chase it oversized, and then you screw in the new threads that are proper size for that particular use. And that's it. Next up, we're going to install the pickup tube, and if the windage tray is already on there, but uh, this pickup tube has an extra bolt that's added on as a little kit that you can buy, just so that you can have two pushing down on that O-ring to make sure it gets a good seal. It is a problem area. Make sure you get the right O-ring. So we'll put a little dab of uh, silicone around the edges of the, where the uh, front and rear covers go on. And slide the oil pan on. Now it's starting to look like an engine. That bolt I just put in is the one where we need to fix the threads on, and it's working just fine. And of course, we torque the bolts down just to make sure that we don't have any leakage. And 
and uh, make sure we don't strip any more threads. Now we're finally ready to install the heads for the last time. We'll put all the ARP studs in there, we'll run them down and snug, not tight, and then we're ready to drop the head on. Now before I put the head on, I actually removed those solid lifters and installed the correct hydraulic lifters for this cam. And so then we're ready to bolt it down. The ARP studs use a special kind of washer, at least this version of them. And so it's got a tapered side that has to be pointed in the right direction. You need to look that up because everyone's different. So uh, we installed the washers with some lube and some and uh, proper bolts and torqued it all down. Now again, different torque settings. This is uh, ARP studs. The valley cover is pretty straightforward. You just torquing it down to, what, 18 foot-pounds. Just realize that a lot of these torque measurements can be different on different sites. So before doing the valve train, the rocker arms, I need to repair one more uh, uh, bolt hole that uh, the threads came out. So that's what this is, and we're drilling it out. We're going to then tap it. So now we're going to create the oversized threads. Uh, I don't like that. Don't be lifting up on me. Create an unsterile situation. So after tapping the oversized threads, then we can screw in the new threads that'll be the correct size. And we're ready. So finally, after getting those threads fixed, we can bolt up the, drive, the valve train. And these are T&D shaft rockers. They are uh, 1.8 to 1 instead of 1.7 to 1. And of course, we torqued them down and got them working correctly. And put my shiny polished valve covers on that didn't turn out too good but <laughs> well with that and the turbo kit pretty much finished we are ready to put this in the car so uh <laughs> it's it's been a challenge and yeah i, I wish it could have gone faster but uh we we've got it we've got most of the details worked out and i'll show you some of those uh <laughs> faux pas and all of that in the future but uh, hey it's been a fun build and looking forward to driving it well be sure to hit that like button and the subscribe and the notification bell and oh and be sure to stay just a minute because I got some autocross footage for you that all the stuff I've been missing <laughs>